All right, folks, so welcome back to my channel. Today, another unboxing video. Well, I thought uh, collecting CPUs is quite interesting, but what about the CPU dies? So the um, semiconductor unit, um, as this is done in micron levels, I thought I'm purchasing a microscope in order to find out if I can yeah, if we can look at the circuits a bit closer and have some fun. Well, this uh, video I will show you how this BNISE B -N -I -S -E, microscope works, how it's set up and if it's any worth using in electronic device investigations. So what do we have? We have here biological microscope instruction the reason I bought it was I saw some videos on the net where the CPUs have been uh, microscoped really nice images you can get on the die on the micron level and especially because I understood there are certain CPUs which have so-called die art, meaning lithographically engraved small images, pictures, and I thought this could be quite some fun to find out which CPU has which kind of logo or hidden Easter egg. Well, let's try and find out. The interesting thing of this device and the reason why I bought it was of course low cost so it was 140 euro it has a magnification up to 2000 times which is I think what I read you need in order to to have a look at the microstructure of dyes important is that this is having a light not from below because this is then in transmission mode where you can look at slices that's not what we're going to do we are going to use the lamp here okay well there's a dimmer let's set it on and see if we can somehow use this all right i set now the microscope um, in pace so you see there's a small hood here which protects it from from dust yeah there is some utilities in order to make some pictures using your camera so we're going to test that uh, later on here is uh, another device which then doubles the whole magnification level and in the back you can see can turn on the light this is in transmission mode and this is in direct light mode as I said the intent is to to look at some CPUs so what we will need to check now is whether there is enough magnification where there is extra enough light and whether I can bring the whole things to, to focus. Let's have a try and see how this works. Now that we have set up um, the microscope and played around a little bit, I would like to demonstrate you how it works. And maybe we can start by looking at the microscope. Later on we will see how we can attach this adapter to an iPhone, iPhone 8 and then uh, try to make pictures looking uh, at a CPU die. Well let's look at the magnification levels again this is the eyepiece which starts with 25 there's the tube which doubles this and then we have three objectives one at four one at ten 
and one at 40. This means if I start at the lowest magnification using the objective four times and the eyepiece of 25, I'm already at 100. With the 10 times magnification of the objective, uh, the yellow one here, that's 10 times 25, which is 250. And then with a 40, I'm already at 1000. 25 times 40 is 1000. If I would then add the tube, then everything doubles. So here I'm looking at 2000. 500 and 200. There is a table attached which you can which you can modify the height, uh, the coarse focus, the fine focus here. You see how this works. I can zoom in a little bit. So this is the coarse one and you see also the fine one moves. These are the, this is the tablet and there you can also fasten or um, fix some of these microscope slides which um, are part of the microscope if you buy it. Okay, well, let's now look at the system. what are we going to do we are going to use the microscope and we are going to see if we can get an image of this um, very interesting piece here which is a uh, Intel 286 you see the die is opened I can show it from this side it's an Intel 286 10 megahertz I will put it under the microscope microscope I will switch on the light and then I will do some microscopy but in order to do that in order to show you the picture I will use my iPhone and first show you how to fix it to the adapter. Well, it's pretty straightforward. You have to align this hole here with the lens. So I have already tried that. And if you now would align that in the best possible way. So step one managed here you have a couple of rings and the rings are matching with the eyepiece you are using so I'm putting the eyepiece in here and I'm tightening it as of to have some kind of a holding well then I'm mounting it directly without the tube so I will start with the lowest magnification I will mount it here and as you see it holds directly which is quite neat I mean it's not very stable but it doesn't have to be because as long as you're not moving too much around you can get really cool pictures so now I aligned already the eyepiece and you see it starts with a circular picture but you can easily zoom in and then you have sort of a, a, a large picture if I'm changing the focus and you see here clearly you can find adjust it well I have now the magnification of four times 25 which is 100 so 100 times magnification and I will now move a little bit the object to find an interesting spot 
because we want to uh, look at the circuit, the CPU itself, maybe we'll see some transistors. So I'm just choosing any kinds of uh, any kind of area here. Let's zoom in again. The reason it's tilted it's because the object uh, hasn't been aligned yet, but I can do that here. And here you go. Here you have your image. It looks quite sharp. You can even digitally zoom in further. You can zoom out again. I think it helps if you have this starting picture because then you can look around and find yourself easier on this large die. Here you can see the, the wires which are going from the frame to the CPU. And now maybe let's look for an interesting area where we have lots of transistors. Look a little bit around. So it's quite neat, I would say. It's a, it's a nice resolution. It's a f great first result. Yeah, while well, you already see, it's not so easy to navigate. And this is the first drawback, I would say. And then I would also say, with this resolution already directly at 100, it's also not ideal. You can have a nice overview, but this is an old CPU. Imagine if we go to more advanced CPUs with the smaller transistor sizes, then it will be difficult to find immediately the interesting spots. But to have a just a a very first peek into things this is this is great and I really love how this easily works this adapter with an iPhone you can zoom in yeah you can see some objects I have now found an interesting area of the CPU die and there appears to be some some writing which is interesting and Let's maybe find zoom and get into focus. Another issue I found out with this microscope, if you want to look at CPU dies, you are looking for some, some writing, some letters, some numbers, it's inversed. So it's, a, it's not a big issue, but if you are looking at certain a CPU die art, yeah, it makes it a little bit cumbersome. Well, you, there's of course one trick, yeah? you just take a picture, you open the picture, and then you just, you just flip it. Yeah, and there you see, yeah, 82, 86, which is the Intel 286. But, yeah, you have to modify the, the pictures you are taking. Looking at the quality of the picture, you also see not everything is really fully in zoom. But um, yeah, I think that you can also handle. Now the question is, what is the highest magnification I can really use in this setup? And what I did, I kept the 25 IPs and now I'm switching to the 40 magnification uh, objective, which would result into 1000 magnification. If I'm trying to find the focus, you will see it, it doesn't work. It's getting dark. If I go away from the CPU, there's some light. And if I go closer and closer, there is nothing coming into the focus and it's getting dark. And that's clear because the objective is now very close to the die and it somehow prevents the light, the built-in light source, to reach the objective. And I can demonstrate you that with an external source, which I'm now using. So I'm using a, a very 
intensive light and there you see the structures are appearing so I of course I cannot really hold that steady yeah, I have to use my hands I have to move move it a bit left and right it's a bit shaky it's the light is always going back and forth I'm adjusting now the focus and you see okay you can get some resolution you can see some very very fine structures but it's only visible using such a device uh, like a, like a mag light um, so you have to get more light to the CPU in order to see it and that's then the the final drawback I would say of this system you have to probably change the setup so there is another light source added to the system okay guys it's time to conclude the microscope is really an entry-level microscope and it has interesting magnification levels it's built in a, in a robust way it's not very heavy you can transport it it works with batteries it has in different light sources you can work in transmission or in reflection which is what you need for CPUs a big plus is I would say that's also a nice surprise this this system here it's steady enough it works you can take pictures I would say it's good enough you don't need an external camera it has a starting magnification of 25 times 4 which is 100 which is my first drawback of the system it would be nice to start at something like 25 or 50 so you get a better overview of the CPU die the second drawback is if you want to navigate and you want to see areas of the CPU you want to move the object and you have to do that manually and that's cumbersome and it's not very accurate that needs really a workaround the third issue that the microscope has is if you want to go to higher magnifications such as 500 or 1000 or 2000 you really need an additional light source otherwise this small lamp will simply not shed enough light there will be shadows created by the system and then you cannot enjoy um, the high resolution of 1000 or 2000 which you really require so the final drawback is that you can take pictures but you have to invert them in order to see the letters or the numbers in the, in the way it was uh, meant to be and it makes it difficult to navigate um, to really find some interesting spots of the CPU. I would in general recommend it as an entry-level microscope let me try to play around a little bit with a couple of other dies. I will use 386, 486, Pentiums, and I will see if I can yeah, get some, some more experience looking at other CPUs. Thanks for watching and I hope you liked the video.